Howdy, howdy, folks. It is Diecast Buffet here again, and what a finish to the 2023 Daytona 500. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. gets, what, his third career win, and it happens to be the biggest stock car race of the year. Make sure to pre-order that 124 scale Diecast. Most likely, they're going to get a 164. It's pretty bad. He's going to win a 500 almost just to get a 164 scale. You can pre-order those at Circle B Diecast. Make sure it's promo code down below. Use code Diecast Buffet for any orders, $30 or more, and you can save on shipping. So let's go to dive into it fellas wow uh this was a really really interesting race the first half of it they were like too wide pretty much the entire event and it was next to no wrecks i mean it was very minimal in terms of the carnage i was actually impressed they were able to go the first 40 laps of the event without any um you know actual cautions for incident so that was really impressive but then once the night time came in and the intensity ramped up Wow. <laughs> I mean, they were going for it, man. Um, holds no bar. I mean, I tell you what, what a great race. What a great race. Just a good, solid Daytona 500. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr. gets his third career win. And what's really interesting, and I kind of noticed this, so in 2001, Michael Waltrip obviously got his first ever victory. Well, in 2021, Mikey, or McDowell, got his first career victory. In 2003, Michael Waltrip got his third career win, which was his second Daytona 500. Well, guess what? Ricky Stenhouse Jr., if that's his third career win, guess what? In 2023, he gets it in the 500. So that's kind of interesting how both of Michael Waltrip's wins somewhat replicated themselves um, with upset winners 20 years later. So that is really interesting. Uh, it was a tough race for the nine camp. They did pretty much nothing <laughs> besides qualifying. I, I, I don't know. That nine car was just not good. And, of course, he got in a wreck, but that's all good. I actually picked Jimmy Johnson to win this race. He was steadily staying in the high. I think the highest he got at the, with the, within the final 30 laps, I think he was around 10th or 12th for, uh, place. Got taken out in that wreck. But, hey, they had some real speed. He was very conservative throughout the race, uh, kind of, you know, late in the back of the field. So, hey, that was my pick. I was thinking either Hamlin, uh, Bowman, or Jimmy Johnson. None of them won it. <laughs> I love to see upset winners, man. This is the first time since 2014 JTG Doherty Racing won a Cup Series event. The last time, well, it's AJ Allmendinger. And to add even more to that, this is the first time, uh, or no, not first, the first time since 2018 that Allmendinger has been full time. So it's just weird how everything's all connected here. Uh, but in terms of the racing quality, they were able to to race side by side, sometimes three wide, and they were they were just. It really reminded me a lot of the 2001 package, how the cars would float around, but they wouldn't just, you know, stay stuck to the racetrack. I really like this restrictor plate uh, package. I know they call it super speedway package. I still call it a restrictor plate, but that's besides the point. I want to know what y'all think. Make sure to comment down below. Um, it ended in a very chaotic, uh, kind of a photo finish, just like the Xfinity race with the caution coming out in the final lap. And, then you know, who was out front and first? Uh, turned out the 47 car was about half a car length ahead of the 22, and he eventually won the race. Who knows how it would have, you know, shooken out if they didn't have the wreck. I personally think the 22 would have won it because <laughs> he would be willing to wreck anyone to win it. I don't blame him. But, wow, man, Daytona 500 never disappoints unless it's 2013. But that's, uh, you know, that's a story for a different day. Wow, what an interesting season it's going to be, guys. You got North Wilkesboro. You got, uh, well, the Chicago Street Race. Um, last two-mile race at Fontana, the All-Star Race, being, of course, North Wilkesboro. And then, um, we, as we already mentioned there, Stenhouse is currently in the playoffs right now. So if we get 17 winners, he might get bumped out. But I think the 47 car is going to be better this year than they were last year. They were able to show speed at some of the, um, I would say, more champion dominated tracks like a Dover or whatnot. Um, so I, I think the 47 is going to find a way to hold on to that top 16 spot. But with them having um, the top 30 in points rule pretty much gone, anybody can win a cup race that's full time. <laughs> they can make the playoffs. So uh, we'll see how that one shakes out. Clearly the Fords are the fastest. I mean, they if they could all just work together, Haas, Penske, Whoever, if they could all just work together, they would have dominated the state ton of 500. They couldn't work together enough. They kept getting split up. Um, it seemed like the teams were not really working together on the choose 
rule. Uh, when the eight car and the three car, that being Kyle Busch and Austin Dillon, when they were up front, I was really surprised. Uh, this was, I think, the second or third to last restart of the race. But I was really surprised that they lined up side by side instead of nose to tail with the choose rule. Because that would allow Austin Dillon, who was behind Kyle Busch, to push him and just go cat go. Instead, Dillon has to slow down, lets the eight in, in line, and then as we sing, the you know, the inside line, which the eight and the three was, they got ran over, and um, yeah, Dillon got taken out, and Kyle Bush was a non-factor, which Kyle Bush loses another Daytona 500. That that's gotta suck for the Kyle Bush fans. I'm so I feel for y'all. Um he's still got many more years, but it's just like it's really becoming the Tony Stewart effect, where it's just like anything and everything is going to happen to keep him from winning the 500. So that's really bittersweet for the eight camp. Uh, they had a really good car and the dual races. Well, they brought another one and still weren't able to get it done. But uh, for Hendrick Motorsports, once again, they don't win the Daytona 500, but they dominate qualifying. And it, it really makes me perplexed that if you look at the, the you know the last you know 15 years of Daytona 500 qualifying. The last time, um, or I say, the last time that uh, Hendrick Motorsports won the day, 2500, was 2014. Well, think about it. 2015, you got the pole. 2016, they got the pole. What was it? 20, uh, 2019, 2020, you no, know, not 20, uh, 2020, and I think 2022, they got the pole as well. My point is, is that they have not won the Daytona 500 in almost a decade, but they've won a crap load of Daytona 500 poles. So it really makes you wonder. Why not just cut back on qualifying, do what the Fords are doing, go for handling, and try to find a way to get to the end? Well, well Chevy won the race. Well, you know, <laughs> that's Daytona. Anything could happen. My point is, Hendrick should have won a lot more 500s uh, than they have the last decade. But regardless, huge congratulations to Ricky Stowns Jr. It might be a Hendrick engine. I know they had one a couple years ago when they won the 500 pole, but... It's just crazy to think that Stenhouse is now a part of the elite company in the sport. Because once you win the 500, you are in it. <sighs> kind of all over the place, guys. <laughs> I'm kind of exhausted. What a great speed weeks or speed five days. <laughs> the dual races, the first dual race sucked, I'll be honest with you. The second dual race was exciting because they actually went for it. I miss when the dual races were beating and banging, uh, taking all the chances they could. Qualifying was fun. The truck race was great, even though the, the rain shortened it. It was still a great event. Xfinity was a lot of fun. Still don't know how JRM found a way to screw that up when they had four of the top five with like 10 laps to go. They found a way to screw that one up. Arca race was really good. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't uh, shorten that one because it ran a little bit long uh, in terms of their time slot. So... Overall, what a great week in racing. It really was a great speed week. Regardless, Stenhouse is the Daytona 500 champion. I really hope they make the 164 or 4. They, they got to. They got to make the 164. I'm not sure if it has confetti on it because, uh, well, he ran out of gas, so he didn't get to do a burnout, so we didn't get all that good stuff. Um, I'm kind of curious if they'll be able to fill it up and do the whole celebration. Who knows? Hopefully it's caked in confetti and, hey, be interesting guys 2023 season already kick it off i'll make sure to get those pre-orders in i know there's a lot of uh people are going to be wanting that race to win diecast but it's just crazy it, it's just it's really crazy to me how like 20 years ago we had a first time winner in the 01 500 we have a first time winner in this uh 2021 500 and then Waltrip wins his third race in 2020 or 2003 and then 20 years later stenhouse which if you really think about it stenhouse is Kind of in that same boat Waltrip was in. He's good at plate races, but he makes a lot of mistakes. Um, and he ends up, you know, winning his third career race. And the, the cap off that little Waltrip uh, Larry McNugget, for the longest, Michael Waltrip was known for that horrible wreck he had in the Kool-Aid car. Michael McDowell, for the longest, was known for that horrible wreck he had in the COT at Texas. They both get their first wins in the Daytona 500. So, who knows? That's all for now. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Diecast Buffet. What a great Daytona 500. Signing off.